Uh, Terran is imbalanced. I think that's what I read. Is that true, wow, Mr. Baby Knight? that's not true, man. <laughs> what did you tweet? I forgot what it was. I know I gave you a hard time about it. Because I know... Uh, no, Baby <laughs> no, Knight is just... just one of the classiest guys out there. He never complains about balance. Terrence is just doing really well in EU. That's all. Oh, yeah. He tweeted like 7 out of the 8. Oh, from, interesting. Uh... Then he said, yes. interesting question yes. mark or something. <laughs> <laughs> See what you're doing there. Oh, maybe a little bit of passive aggressiveness. There. No, it's fine. Um, but here we are in game one of this best of three. In the top left-hand location, we have the blue Protoss player from Team Evil Geniuses. Known by Jeffrey John Vincent Robinson. Did I say that right? Did I remember that? Yes. He's also known as In Control. Very well known North American player, personality, and caster. Very inspirational figure for many. He's had a great run this tournament. He too. has. He made all the winners back around five before he lost. Should I put you on the spot and ask who? Oh, I, I don't know who you. Okay. I don't know what was exactly. I didn't finish my question, wins. so I'm not putting you on the spot. The bottom yeah. right hand location. <laughs> We have the Red Terran player, currently number three on the NA Grandmaster Ladder, according to Mr. Baby Knight. He is Drunken Boy, and he has the tag FXO. So is he is he FXO NA? Uh, he might be. He might be. I honestly, I, sorry. Okay. <laughs> of course, Baby Knight used to be an FXO, but FXO EU still became kind of. still kind of. I'm not sure how that all works but you are now a Navi yeah no. are we gonna see a blink stalker opening from a control is the question uh, I would say no I've never really seen him do a lot of blink stuff in general especially not against Terran I've actually watched his stream a lot uh, recently and he seems like he's gotten a lot better um, so I'm kind of excited to watch this game actually all right let's see what happens sending a probe across the map poking away at some SEVs Hasn't spotted the gases yet, but now going to send the probe deeper inside his opponent's main base, and he will, in fact, spot the gas. He's going to retreat back, and no, make it home? no SCV will make a depot there to keep him from leaving. Nice. Probe might actually make it home. Well, there's a Reaper on the way. Better run, Probe. Mm -hmm. So like, how much of a head start does a probe need? Gosh. Know, All right, so the, the distance of <laughs> Aklon Waste is 450 meters. Okay. The probe moves at one centimeter per second. A Reaper moves at 1.3 centimeters per second. So according to my calculations, the probe needs a 20 meter head start. Sounds Assuming good. Assuming they, they move in the, the most optimal path possible. Yes. Wow. He's really scared of uh, proxy shenanigans from Terran. Look, <laughs> he's yeah. cutting everywhere with that probe. Uh, oh. Not a bad idea though. The one probe isn't too big of an impact on his economy at this point. We can see Drunken Boy, of course, getting a reactor after the Reaper. That's the very, very standard follow-up. Uh, the Reaper usually keeps the Protoss at home long enough for that reactor to really pay itself off before any pressure can cross the map. Oh. Command Center behind that Reaper getting one kill. Is he going to lose the Reaper to Stalker? No. no. Got to keep that guy alive. It's such a viable scouting tool as the game progresses. All right. So the Reaper already getting a kill, and he'll be back, I'm, I'm sure. Um, it's very important to maximize the effectiveness. He, he's got to, like, back up, take a pause to both use his combat drugs, yes. scratch a little notch in his belt, you know. Uh, and then it'll come back and action in front of scouting round. Nexus going down from in control, so no one base blink stuff. Baby Knight, you made a great call there. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> going for the fast expansion. And I, I wonder if we're going to see just the, 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 the heavy sentry play. Not heavy, but like two to three sentry play. Staying on one gate, going straight to Robo, getting a relatively early militia core. I think that's definitely a, a possibility. Hmm. Three sentries. That's not something I see a lot anymore. Is it two centuries? But uh, could could be, could be. Yeah, just like the, um, it seems like with the photon overcharge on the Nexus, a lot fewer gateway units are required to defend yes. against the shenanigans from Terran early on. Also, a lot fewer sentries, so you can get your tech and upgrades going a little bit faster now. Yeah. And how did the swarm? Typically, if I see uh, a lot of sentries early from Protoss, it often turns into like a zero upgraded mass colossus timing, like a like a three colossi timing. Yeah, um, yeah, that could be, yeah. Yeah, because then you have a lot of energy built up, and so you, you get them early. Uh, and with the rubble this fast, it could be, but queuing up double observers instead of going straight for support pay means it's probably not going to be that fast timing. Maybe just wants to get some extra energy, maybe use some hallucinations later, or, or just be sure that he has great force fields in, in the big game. Right. Seeing a drunken boy marching across the map with four Marines and a Widow Mine back home. 
What has he got? He's got a reactor on the factory, but not making anything out of that just yet. The medevac is underway, and we're going to see two Hellions in production. So pretty interesting unit composition that uh, Drunken Boy is electing to go for at this stage in the game. Probably going to try to pressure the front a little bit, perhaps force a photon overcharge, while at the same time potentially dropping in his opponent's main base and going after that economy. Look at that fast upgrade from Junkin Boy. Not wanting to be uh, stuck in Rossi's shoes like they in that one game where Rossi was behind by so many upgrades. Already getting that plus one weapons. Putting out some pressure with Widowmind's going to try to contain the Protoss. Ah. Oh, great use of Photon Overcharge there. And those Widowmind's are under pressure. Where's the, where'd the Observer go? Yeah, I, I think the Observer is coming probably. Oh, it went across mm. the map. It's going across yeah. the map right now. He's probably building this. He has a second one, though. Yep, the second one comes into action. Oh, two Hellions trying to sneak by into the main, and one is going to get by, but... A lot of Terran's dying here. Yeah, in control taking out pretty much every unit there at the natural expansion. Meanwhile, the Hellion trying to track down probes in the main, in control trying to pull those gonna... guys to surround the Hellion, with the Hellion getting some good shots off. In control. He's up Don't to lose. four kills. One Hellion should not get four kills like that. Oh, six. Oh, no. So that, went, that, oh. Went, that started out really good for in control, but... That Hellion, man. Yeah. That Hellion. I, I still don't know if that attack was worth it. Yeah. He did lose a lot of. Well, well I, I feel like uh, Drunken Boy should have split up the Widowmites a bit more in the beginning. He was just clumping them up and burying them the same place. It's yeah. a lot easier to deal with uh, that way for the Protoss. Of course, because one observer can then attack every single Widowmine. Oh no, the yeah. Medivac flying right over the Stalkers, and it's going to get. Oh, wow. He switched Target Fire to take down the Widowmine before it could uh, burrow, and he got the Medivac. Great pickoff there from Control. Right, this game is definitely going in the hands of In Control, except for the unfortunate uh, Hero Hellion. Yeah. Try to even up the <laughs> score. Uh, Jungle Boy, though, he's progressing with a third CC. And you remember, he did get that fast attack upgrade. So uh, that could come into play if he can uh, continue the upgrade path and, and maintain his advantage. But In Control now with double forges is going to try to even up that score. Let's see where Jungle Boy goes here. I mean, he has that third command center. So uh, it's not like he's going to try to be... Um I'm trying to think of a timing he might have here, but it's just based on how the early part of this game has gone for in control. I think he might be feeling pretty safe. He's going up to Robotics Bay. He has, is that, I think that's, yeah, it's 1-1 one, one underway on the Forges. Blink underway as well. We're seeing a lot of Protoss go for uh, Blink so they can have that mobility, of course, with the the uh, Ignite Afterburners and Medivacs being scary. Blink is very nice to have to potentially try to deal with those attacks and, of course, take it down Vikings later when you're going Colossi is very important. So it's nice to have Blink in that case. We see a Widowmine drop going to be attempted here at the natural. In control is there with the stalker saying, no, get out of here, man. Not today. Not today. So, Baby Knight, what do you think about uh, In Control's order in which he built the things? Uh, the support bay, kind of a little bit on the late end. Of it. Like, uh, I think he started at support bay like that 1030 mark or so. I actually like that a lot based on uh, the attack the Terran did uh, earlier because that's going to delay the Terran a lot from getting things like Stim and whatnot. Um, so he's safe for a longer time, so you can get the upgrades up first and things like that. And uh, he, he just needs to get the Colossus eventually. Um, I predict he's going to take a third base pretty soon here. I don't think he's going to be aggressive at all uh, okay. with the double forge. And also it can be very scary if you're leaving your base against the Terran now without having High Templars at home to feed back Medivacs. So I, I'd say he's probably going to take a third really soon here. And he's killing the rocks now, so yeah. Medivac sneaking into the main from in control. It's four widow mines inside, but there are three stalkers there. So in control doing a great job, continually denying these drop attempts from Drunken Boy. Um, again, keeping these stalkers in his main and his natural blink is about to finish. So, so far, I I'm liking the the uh, the way in control is playing this. It seems like he's doing all the right things as far as what I've seen. It definitely looks that way. Uh, he also uh, he's been he continued to produce probes for quite a long time. So I believe he's past the two base saturation mark, uh, which means that he definitely Ooh. will be looking to take a third base. Maybe that point out he was taking down those rocks. Uh, yeah, not not a bad probe count. So the third base should be started right about now. He's got blink done, so he can easily blink between the main and the third to defend. Drops a little bit easier. Nice sneaky Widomon positioning. That's not <laughs> noticed. And yeah. in control walks by there. That could he be... has an observer really close to that. What an unfortunate uh, little extra distance that Observer needs to go to get those spots off because uh, that would be a nice win if you could pick those two uh, wooden mines off. Yeah. Great position there, though. I like. Uh, I think we saw that in a ZBT yesterday. It might have been one of the last ZBTs. STC versus me, I think. Yes. You are correct, Mr. Axlev. All right. So, third base underway here from in control. Did he ever get Colossi range? 
I don't thermal lance. That's a good. Yeah, you do. You do? Okay. Just double checking. Yeah. With that many classes. I mean, I, I've seen uh, I've seen players like uh, S SKT Rain has even forgotten right. thermal lance before. So it's not it's not like it doesn't happen. Right? People do forget it, and I just wanted to make sure it, didn't, it wasn't happening in control there. He's a little bit behind in supply, uh, but of course. That's, that's okay, because he's going to have an upgrade advantage with 2-2 two, two versus 2-1. Two, uh, and also, uh, he, he's got a very strong army. He's got a lot of claw sci out. He's got blink done, charge on the way. Most of his tech is, is complete. Just needs to add in those Templar to really get the full set. So, Baby Knight, what is uh, in Control's game plan here? What, what's the next step for him? Is it just keep the third base safe while eventually transitioning into Templar? Um, what do you think? Um... I I think right now he's uh, trying to figure out exactly where Terran is at because he wants to start his 3-3 but as you can see he's uh, kind of holding on with that uh, he's he wants to be safe before anything so uh, he needs to hold this attack though that's incoming now all right drunken boy coming forward trying to lead with those Vikings to take down the Colossus photon overcharge going down there's the blink board from in control taking out one Viking Marines Rod is gonna step up to the top poking at the pylon but we're backing away there's the scan from Drunken Boy trying to find out, all right, what's my opponent's unit composition? Meanwhile, behind this, Drunken Boy starting up plus three in control, doing the same thing. Three, three, just now starting with the Chrono Boost. He should maintain that upgrade advantage. More and more gateways being piled on, and now we see Drunken Boy adding in those Hellbats. That's something I think in control is a little worried about early in the game about the Hellbat drops. Not happening this game, but he is going to add him in for his late game composition, uh, which does really help the Terran with their beefiness. A lot of Marines and Marauders there. Um, all right, the High Temple Archives is underway. And Crank uh, was a guy who never really researched Storm and just, archons. Just, just made Archons. I wonder, uh, actually, hold that thought. In control, heading straight for that third base. And again, it's very hard to engage uh, this location. I don't like this spine control, to be honest. Uh, he's upgrading 3 3 now, but they're really far away from finishing. And he's not even maxed against the Terran that's maxed. Uh, he's going to try to go for a time warp. going down, blinking to the side. The Colossi trying to get their damage out from the back. Force field's going down as well. In control, trying to make this work. But Drunken Boy with a great concave. And the Colossus is going to go down. The Stalkers still remain. But they're going to be no match against that bio army. And that did not that did not go too well for In control. Mm. It actually didn't go as badly as it could have. That was yeah. some nice time warps from In control, actually. Um, I feel like the, the timing of, of what he was doing there was a bit off. But he made the most of what he could from that fight, I think. Problem is now Jungle Boy's crossing the map in control with no area of effect damage to back up his army. A nice little Zealot counterattack, but uh, actually, is Jungle Boy going to back off? Yes. Wow. It gets yeah. so hard, man. But he would have been fine, though, yeah. against this army. It, it's just hard to justify running all your bio through a little choke and trying to kill something that could get yeah. an overcharge. It would be a very, very tight you, choke. Yeah. And Stalkers would get such a great concave. You can blink micro backwards. As soon as uh, the first, you know, Colossus joins the fray, it gets pretty bad. Uh, neither player taking the fourth base call yet. So that's kind of interesting. We're here at the 1830 mark. Uh, is there even a fourth command center built from Junker Boy? Um, yes. He's floating it right now. Okay. So just, just going for that fourth right now. Uh, that's going to give him a little bit of an advantage in control, of course. We'll be looking to even up that base count. Uh, but right now, all his resources are going into Colossi production. Now he's ending that size storm. Perhaps when he starts warping in more high Templar, he'll get a little bit of extra minerals to, uh, at his disposal, and that's where he's going to throw down the Nexus. Yep, and that's exactly but, what's um, going to happen. I will say, in control is still in this game, but if Drunken Bar is really good at playing the late game and he has really good ghost control, uh, like someone like uh, Happy from uh, Russia, I don't know if you know him, but yes, you probably do. Of course, <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good. Um, yeah, if he has a really good ghost control, like someone like Happy, then I think this will be really hard for in control. Oh, Mothership Core coming forward. Nice feedbacks there from In Control. Turning his High Templars into Archons, but Storm is not yet done, and Drunken Boy might be looking for an engagement. I don't think there are any High Templar here. Uh, anyway, the Charge Lot's coming for the Archons there as well. Charge Lot's coming from every location. Colossi trying to get their damage done, and the Stalkers left to take care of the Vikings, and the Charge Lot's trying to close that distance. In Control getting a great wow. engagement here. Really well done by In Control there. Jungle Boy's Such nice use of Time Warp. Yes, the time warp was amazing. Love the charge shots that close the distance with yeah. those marauders. Uh, and you know, if the marauders can't kite effectively, mm -hmm. charge shots do amazing against them. Uh, what's really cool there is, is he also took out all the Vikings. 
And I think he only yeah. lost a single um, Colossus to get every single one of those Vikings. Uh, and there was like eight Vikings he killed there, which of course uh, is going to help him as he continues to produce Colossus out of double Robos. I, that's like exactly what In Control needed based on you know how that game was going. Uh, he needed a cost efficient engagement, and I think that, that, that that's what happened. It, as Baby Knight said before, it started with that Ghost versus High Templar control. Our, uh, Ink Control was able to get those two feedbacks off, turning those High Templar yeah. into an Archon, and that's what started the battle. There was no EMPs. Right. Yeah. Well, I think there might have been one. One, or yeah. one or two. The Archons, though, were, were basically still their exactly. full strength. Mm -hmm. So, still a, a relatively even game, in my personal opinion. Yeah. Um, Again, it comes down to those engagements. In control, sending two zealots to that third, trying to chop away some SCBs. Jungle Boy's got a few Hellbats in the army. In control's very zealot heavy. So, uh, what do you think, Baby Knight, about Jungle Boy adding maybe a second reactor factor and really cranking out those Hellbats? Uh. Um, I don't know about that. They're actually not very um, supply efficient uh, in the late game. You'd always yeah. rather have a ghost than a Hellbat. So. He really needs to start adding a lot more ghosts now. He only has three right now. Uh, In Control does only have three High Templars, so it's not as bad as it could be, but he also has three Archons, so... Um, he, yeah, he really needs to make some ghosts. All right, In Control going to try to deny this fourth base. It's a great decision, but you can't get caught off guard. There's the scan from Dragon Boy trying to find those High Templars. One getting sniped away. There's still two remaining, but those High Templars are a very important part of this composition. Taking down that fourth, but In Control needs to win this battle. Dragon Boy, he'll win this battle. He's going to be fine. There's a storm. There's another storm. Great storms onto the bio, but oh, the is zealots. that going to be enough from In Control? The Zealots are actually nowhere to be found. Oh, there they are. They're, oh. They were killing uh, SCVs. <laughs> they wow. were having fun killing defenseless workers, but then their compatriots fell. Uh, that's going to be a battle Drunga Boy takes, but took In Control did. He took down the fourth. Yeah. He's, he's delayed mine to the third. And he did do a lot of damage to Drunga Boy's army with some storms. So uh, the battle wasn't good for In Control, but I still think he's I, I think he's doing great in this game right now if he can hold this counterattack, which is actually going to be very difficult given that ghost count. Drunga Boy down to 36 harvesters, and again, down to three bases as well. I feel like Drunga Boy almost has to counter and push right now, but that, uh, honestly, that timing might be gone, because again, behind this, in control, adding in more High Templar, adding in more Archon, Zealots, Colossi, so I don't know if a timing exists anymore for Drunken Boy. I almost feel like he has to just stay passive, maybe just retake that fourth base, and, and build that economy back up while, while getting his units back on the field. I, I agree with that, but he, um, I think he should actually fly the main command center out now, uh, to a fourth base location, uh, because he kind of needs to start getting new uh, places to mine from right now. Uh, although he actually has a very low ECV count, which is hurting him a lot right now. So I think you're right that he kind of has to do something right now. Yeah. His economy is really hurt. In control going up to four robos. That's going to allow him to really <laughs> utilize his economic advantage to just overwhelm his opponent with uh, hordes of Colossi. Uh, probably easily able to outproduce the Viking count. But there's a lot of Vikings right now. Colossi caught off guard. Uh, Archon's oh. trying to get the, the damage yeah. done. Almost getting a money shot there. Oh, he has 12 ghosts now. That's really scary. Right. It's going to be down to the Colossus. Uh, is that Templar coming forward? Trying to get that storm? Not bad. He's got that observer spotting his enemy. We got another Zealot counterattack going to the third base. In control has been great about this throughout this, and Drunken Boy needs those SCVs to stay alive. High Templar coming forward again, looking for a storm. Oh. Great storm onto the army. Oh my god. We got a medevac there as well. Two Terrible medevacs damage. And, a Viking. and the Vikings are so low in health now. Yeah. That was the storm of the century. And now in control is going to seize the moment while the units are all still hurt, charging in there. Ghosts are cloaked, oh, and in control doesn't even care. Well, I don't know if he has an observer. I don't think he cares about an observer. He's just going to kill everything else. Can he make it happen? The claw side trying to get that oh, damage yeah. done onto the bio army. The Archon leading the charge as well, but the ghosts oh, are still wow. cloaked and still doing damage. In control has oh, that he supply needs, lead. He's an observer. He does need an observer. Where are you? Oh observers? my god. He has none on the field and none in production. I think he might just be the power through, though, with, with massive warp and reinforcements. Uh, he did take a lot of damage, but remember, he has the spear economy. He can replace those losses as well. Especially yeah. if he can get one observer and kill those ghosts off. Uh, they're gonna retreat. Let's Such nice counterattacks by In Control. He keeps sending uh, yes. like three or four cells to the third of the turn. So so nice play. It's gotta be annoying. Um, but yeah, In Control up 122 to 92 in supply. He's gonna be taking another base here at the bottom left. And uh, DTs oh. are now being mixed in. There's a DT and being sent to that fourth base. He's only got, I think he only has three orbitals. And he only has a few SCVs, so he's really been powering the mules. This is a great time to really use that DT harass. All right. Uh, I mean, he's got to use EMPs to scout it, um, but I've, I don't think people still remember that works. <laughs> uh, you can actually use EMP to detect. Oh, another DT in the third. Gosh. 
Drunken Boy, I, I think he feels he's got a counterattack because he's moving out now. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what his options are. He's down to 23 harvesters. But, uh, in controls, he has so many Colossi, I think. I mean, he had four Robos. How can he not have so many Colossi, right? How many does he have? Um, oh, just just one. the one. But he has a lot of gateway units. Yeah. And and there's mostly ghosts, which oh, are Oh, taking down the Observer. Oh, oh there's another, another one. one after. Yeah. Well, uh, that should be it. And in control of 157 to 63 in supply, Drunken Boy is on the run. But uh, there's the GG. Wow. In control. Very nicely played. Game number one. Um, He's playing really well. Yeah. I was really impressed that game. Yeah, uh, me too. Uh, he, he made some mistakes. Um, like that first like timing. The, or lack of a timing we were talking about. When he yeah, hit well, like the 3-3 was he, halfway. Yeah, there was that. But he actually did really well in the fight. So I, mm -hmm. I guess that was kind of okay. Mm -hmm. But the, the big things were the attack at the Terrence 4th with all the cells just killing SCVs. <laughs> I feel like yeah. he could have done a lot better in that engagement. Um, but it still ended up being okay for him, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then also the Hellion in the beginning killing a lot of SCVs or yeah. probes. But other than that, he actually did really well. Uh, he actually played really well. I love the, the consistent counterattacks with the Zealots. Yeah. That can be so important yeah. in every matchup, too, I think. Um, of course, you kind of have to be careful if, if you're doing it too much because you don't want to just throw away Zealots if your opponent has like a planetary there or something. But, or a bunker. Right, in control, able to not only prevent that, but, but identify the lack of, of the, the, the necessary defenses. And, and throughout that game, able to get, I think he was up to 60 workers killed. Which is huge. So uh, a great game there yeah. for In Control. So guys, stay tuned. In Control is one win away from advancing to the next round of this lower bracket. You're watching the WCS America Qualifier. I'm Axel Toss, joined by Axelab. And of course, Baby Knight is on the line, helping us cast some awesome StarCraft 2. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday. We'll see you in Game 2.